Hi everyone, my name is Karis and welcome back to my corner of the internet where I talk about books and other things that I enjoy. I'm so excited to film today's video because firstly, it's a bit of a birthday special and secondly, I think it's going to be embarrassing but hopefully also funny. So back when I was on booktube the first time around, I made a video called 20 books to read in my 20s and uploaded it on my 20th birthday. And now I'm nearly 25. It's my 25th birthday on the 19th of April, which is the day after this video goes up. And I thought it would be a really fun idea to do a little bit of a check-in on this video, because theoretically, I'm halfway through my 20s now, which <laughs> hurts me to say a bit, but I should also be halfway through the books. I absolutely do not think that I'm gonna be. I would predict that at best I'll have read five, but I think more likely I probably have read like two or three. I didn't really read very much between the ages of 21 and then almost 24. And that's a good portion of that time. And I also think that the books that I put on there are going to be more like classics or things that I'm intimidated by and those sort of things that you think, oh, I'll get to them one day. And 19 year old me thought, oh, 10 years, that's such a long time. Now, halfway through, like five years later, I could not believe that that was five years ago. But we'll have to see. I'm just gonna react to the video. I'm gonna say if I've read them, say whether I still want to read them because I think that there will be a lot here that I don't want to read anymore. We'll just see, we'll just get on with it. As usual with these sorts of videos, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on because otherwise I'm literally not gonna be able to see the screen and the reaction will be pretty boring. Hi everyone, it's Karis. I turned 20 years old today, which is absolutely crazy. I honestly can't believe it. And I really, really wanted to make a video because last year for my 19th, I showed you all 19 books that summed up my reading life so far. And I didn't want to do the same thing again because it would just be like one more book than last year. So this year, I thought that I would show you 20 books that I want to read in my 20s. I already can't believe that this was five years ago. That is just, I don't know. I'm having a bit of a moment about that, to be honest. Like, it's just gone so quickly. I think back to like the years between 15 and 20. Like, I thought that was quick at the time, but that seems like so much more of a time period than the years between 20 and 25. I mean, I guess I have done a lot. Like I've graduated uni, started my job, moved away from home, like all that sort of stuff. But I just, let's not dwell on that because I feel like I could just have a meltdown just about that. Let's just see what books I talked about. So obviously these aren't the only 20 books that I'm going to read in my 20s. Funny you should say that, Karis, because I would say between 21 and 24, you probably did only read about 20 books. So you could have actually been right about that. <laughs> But these are books that have been on my TBR for what feels like absolutely ages. A lot of them are books that are constantly being listed as things that everyone should read at least once. And See, this is why I think that they won't be things that I've actually read because they're sort of like once in a lifetime sort of books, like books that people told me I should have read or like what's, what people deem you need to read and probably therefore not likely to be things that I was genuinely interested in. And all of them are just, you know those sort of books that you mean to read, but they're never yeah. at the top of your TBR, so you never get round to them. They're all those sorts of books. So I thought. I so then I made this video and didn't prioritise them, probably. I would show you 20 of them that I'm definitely going to read before I turn 30, which I think is a really realistic goal because 10 years, I can read a lot of books in that amount of time. So the first one that I've got here is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Off to a good start uh, because I haven't read that. I do still have it. I do still want to read it at some point. I don't like feel like I'm missing out by not having read it. But I think the reason it still intrigues me is because I really would like to do a video where I read popular books that like a lot of people read for secondary school in the UK that I didn't. So like To Kill a Mockingbird would be one and Inspector Calls, that would be another one. Because obviously like depending on where you went to school or just your teacher, you would have studied different books for your GCSEs. And that is a video that I'm interested in doing. And this would definitely be one of them because I know a lot of people did this one at school. So let me know if you'll be interested in that. Which a lot of you will probably be shocked to find that I still haven't read yet. This just seems to be one of those books that everyone seems to read at school. But I never did I say? it. I did The Crucible and Of Mice and Men instead. And I've just never got round to reading it. But I've got this really pretty edition. So I definitely want to get round to it at some point. Next here, I've got The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, which is in this binder edition. I, I haven't read this. I feel like I've said so many times, even since coming back to booktube, that... I really want to read an Anne Bronte because I've read Charlotte and Emily, but I still haven't read Anne. I do have, oh, it is. I have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall right here. Can I get it out? 
I have a nice um, Penguin English Library edition of it now. This is one that I would like to get round to like autumn sort of time. I was going to read it last autumn and I didn't. So hopefully this autumn, maybe for like Victober, this would be a good one. Yeah, I still want to read that one. So two not read and two that I still do want to read at some point. Although I would definitely prioritise this one over To Kill a Mockingbird. I just really wanted to try a book by Anne Bronte because I've read both Emily and Charlotte Bronte. I feel like has five years really gone by because I'm literally saying exactly the same things. Bronte's works before, but never anything by Anne. And one of my lecturers really likes this book, I mm, think. So I don't remember that. Be good. Next is Little Women by... I read this one. Yes, I read this one. I read it at the start of 2020 and really enjoyed it. Louise May Alcott, which I've got in this beautiful Puffin in Bloom edition. And I just really want to read this one because it's a children's classic, which I just never got round to when I was younger. I feel like I know the story of it. I feel I must have dipped in and out of it at various times when I was younger. I feel like that's a lie. I feel like I knew a bit of what happened from watching Friends. But okay, if 20 year old me thought that, then she clearly has a better memory of her childhood than I do. I've definitely never read the book way through and now that i've got this really pretty edition of it there's no excuse to get round to it next is the little prince and i've forgotten the author's name but i'll put a picture of it up somewhere and you'll be able to see it on there i can't say i thought i wasn't going to put the picture up then um i haven't read this i feel like there was a time when a lot of people seem to mention this in videos but to be honest i'm not that bothered about reading it anymore i certainly see this book being talked about as everyone's favorite from their childhood and I just really want to see what it's all about because I never read it when I was younger and I definitely feel like I'm missing out on something. At number five is a series and that is the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. Absolutely not. I haven't read these and I am absolutely not going to read these. I know a lot of people love them. I just have absolutely no interest. It's so far removed from my sort of thing. I feel like at this time, although I didn't really read fantasy then either, I feel like I was still trying to fit into reading books that were like popular on booktube and books that everyone seems to be reading and if loads of people are reading it then I must love it too and I'm going to be missing out on something and I feel like I do still obviously experience that because there are books that people talk about and I'm like oh yeah I really want to read that but I feel like now I've got a much better understanding of the genres or the sort of like basic parameters of what I'm going to enjoy if that makes sense and I just don't think I will enjoy these books also there is so many of them I don't even know like all the different worlds. So yeah, I'm gonna pass on these. That's good, one off the list. I feel like the only person on the planet who hasn't read this series yet. I did read book one about three years ago, so I really can't remember anything about it. And I just really want to try it out and see if I would enjoy the world as much as everyone else on booktube does. Next is the- Yeah, as I said, I really can't be bothered now to see if I would or not. Give her by Lois Lowry. I bet I'm gonna say that I want to read this because Taylor Swift was in the film. I feel like I am so predictable and that is definitely something that I would have said. I haven't read it and I don't care about reading it anymore and I haven't even seen the film so you know fake Taylor Swift fan over here. This is another children's classic that everyone seems to have read and loved but I haven't. When the film came out I was going to buy it and read it then because I thought it sounded really interesting from like the trailers and stuff but I never got around to it so I really want to do it eventually. Number I didn't mention Taylor Swift. Wow that is definitely the reason why I was interested in the film also we, we love the freeze frame that I've paused on here. Really photogenic. Seven is The Health by Catherine Stockett. I watched the film at the beginning. I'm actually really surprised that this book is on here. I guess I'm about to say that I saw the film quite recently and that's why it was in my memory. Um, but I didn't read it. I feel like there was a time when I really wanted to read it but I don't really want to read it anymore. I feel like I've also seen reviews and articles about it recently from people of colour talking about the representation that's in it. I think maybe I'll link to some articles below. And I just really like to read the book because normally I do read the book before watching the film but I just didn't this time. Next is Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz de Fon. Yes, I've read this and I only finished it like a week ago, a week and a half ago. So that is good, I got it in just in time. Yeah, I'd wanted to read this for ages and I know, because I put that picture on screen, I know I'm going to say that I was putting off reading it because it's Zed in the Penguin Drop Caps collection, which you can see I've got like half of, and I was collecting them in order and I wanted to read it from that edition, but 
I ultimately just decided after like so long of wanting it that I haven't bought one of these books in like four years. So it's going to be ages until I get this edition. Also to read from these, you sort of wear away at the spines. So it's probably better just to have a separate copy to read from. So I got a copy like second hand and read it from that and um, it's going to be in my April wrap up but I really enjoyed it. There were a few things that I didn't like so much about it but I gave it like a three and a half to probably more like a four star. And I just think this book sounds so amazing. It's a book about books and I always love things like that. The only reason why I haven't bought it and read it yet is because I'm collecting the Penguin Drop Caps collection and it's Zed in the collection and I've been collecting it in alphabetical order. So if I already owned it, I definitely think I would have read it by now, but I'm just being really stubborn and waiting until I get that edition of it. So hopefully at some point I will get that book and be able to read it because it's probably one of the ones that I'm most excited about. Next is just any book by Agatha Christie. I still haven't read an Agatha Christie book. There are just so many of them though, aren't there? Like she's an author who I'm like, oh yeah, I would like to read one of her books one day, but I just, I just never prioritise them. Over the past year, I've really enjoyed reading a few different murder mysteries and I found that I enjoy those sorts of books as opposed to thrillers. Like I like having a detective to follow. So I do need to get around to them. I just think I don't really know where to start and that puts me off. And then because there are so many of them and they obviously are so old, I'm like, oh, well, they'll always be there. I guess it's silly because any book ever is always going to be there, isn't it? But <laughs> I don't know. There's just some reason why I haven't picked them up yet. Like they're never a priority. I've been reading a lot more mystery and thriller books recently. And I just really want to try an Agatha Christie book because she is always said to be one of the most famous crime and mystery writers that there is. But I don't know which one to start with. So if you've read any Same. Agatha Christie before, let me know in the comments which one you think is a good place to start with her books. I'll just echo what 19 year old me said. Let me know if you've read them where I should start. I know quite a few of my friends have read them. So yeah, let me know. Next is The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebel. Ooh, I haven't read this. I've still got it on my shelf there. I do still want to read this. I've actually been looking at it quite recently thinking, oh, maybe I should try and get through some of the books that are on my shelf here that I've had for years. I feel like when I made this video, my reading tastes was solely YA, whereas now I've been reading a lot more literary fiction and a lot less YA. And I do feel like I'm kind of glad that I didn't read some of the books on my adult fiction shelf back then because I feel like my tastes are better suited to them now. And I feel like I will enjoy this one. I loved the film when I was younger. It was one of my favourites. So yeah, maybe I should get round to that one soon because I must have owned that book for like a good 10 years at this point. This film was one of my absolute favourites around the time it came out. I bought the book right back when the film was out, which is why it's in this movie edition and I still haven't got round to it. So it definitely deserves a place on this list. At number 11 is Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foye. This is similar. It's, it's actually literally right next to the lovely bones on that bookshelf. Maybe I could read those too. Maybe I could do like a vlog of reading books from this video that I still want to read. I only recently bought this from a charity shop, but before... Okay, so I've only owned it for five years then. Great. <laughs> but I just heard so many things about it. Again, it's one of those ones that people say you should definitely read. I feel like around this time, everyone was talking about this book. I feel like a popular booktuber must have read it and then everyone was reading it all around the same time period but i haven't actually heard anyone talk about it for a very long time i don't actually know what it's about should i look it up should i get it off the shelf and have a look let's do it um oh it doesn't what i don't understand why is the back cover like that what what this is the front cover and then this is the back cover but it's like upside down oh i don't get it a young man arrives in the ukraine clutching in his hand a tattered photograph he is searching for the woman who 50 years ago saved his grandfather from the nazis okay that's probably why i was interested in it at the time because it's like world war ii historical fictiony based and it definitely sounds like something that i would enjoy next is a tale for the time being by ruth Aziki. i feel like this was in one of my other reaction videos as well recently I do really want to read this. There's no reason why I haven't picked it up. I just haven't. So maybe, as I just said, maybe those three books would be a good little reading vlog and then I could get through some more of these because so far we're on like three books out of however many I've talked about so far. I had this book a couple of Christmases ago but I still haven't got around to it. This is set in Japan and I'm really interested in reading about cultures that I haven't really read about that much and I don't think I've ever read anything set in Japan. At number three, that's quite fun that I said that I guess because now I, obviously I'm like working on a series on my channel where I talk about books from all different countries. 13 is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Oh, shout out to Rhiannon, Welsh reader. <laughs> 
um i told her in our sprints the other day that this one would be on here because i remembered talking about it i don't know what i'm gonna say about it but i just had a feeling it was gonna be on this list i don't know it would probably be like at the lower end of my priorities but i do still want to read it uh, partly because it is rihanna's favorite book and i know she was saying oh i should do like a video like how she's doing on her channel like reading different people's favorite books and then i could read this i just don't know if i would enjoy it and i've never seen the film i've never seen any of the lord of the rings films actually that's not the truth i have seen the hobbit but my flatmate had it on when i got back from like a night out or the pub or something and then we were playing a drinking game and i'd already been drinking so i don't really class it as having seen it because i don't really remember <laughs> anything about it so other than that, I have no knowledge of the film or like the world or Tolkien stuff in general. I've never read any Tolkien before, which shocks quite a lot of people. And I don't really think The Lord of the Rings would be my thing. And I feel like The Hobbit is more of an easier starting place because it's a children's book. So I would like to read this one eventually. Not sure when, but I thought it definitely deserved a place on the list. See, even then I was like, not sure when, as if like I wanted to read it, but ultimately not really that bothered even then and it was on my flipping list next is gone girl by Gillian flynn i've read this one i do i still own it or oh, i do still own it maybe i could unhaul that because i didn't really like gone girl it wasn't really for me and i was really annoyed because i was so looking forward to seeing the film and i made sure to read the book before i watched the film so i had to wait for like ages because it took me ages to read the book and then i read the book and i was like oh and i've been meaning to read this ever since film came out because I really wanted to go and see the film which I still haven't seen because I don't see the point of watching it and then reading it because I feel like it would definitely spoil the book for me. My housemate also read this book a few months ago and she's been bugging me about getting onto it ever since so Laura I will definitely be reading this book. Out of all of these books this is the one that I want to get to first so we can finally watch the film. Next is The Impossible Knife of Memory by Laurie House Anderson. I read that's a really strange one to be on this list. I don't know if I even have this book or if I've ever had it. I do have a couple of Laurie House Andersons, but I'm not sure if this is one of them. I think I'm about to say that I've read Speak and possibly Winter Girls at this point I'd read as well. And I did really enjoy both of them. I feel like Laurie House Anderson was like the first author that introduced me to like mental health as a theme in YA books. And I think that's why I was really keen on reading all of her books. And now I'm like, I again i wouldn't prioritize them i've got a couple of them on red and i do want to get to them at some point but they're never like right at the top of my tbr you know i'd have to really think about putting them in there so i guess if i had this one or if i saw it like in a charity shop for cheap then i would buy it and then i would try and get around to it eventually but it's very much on the back list speak by Laurie house anderson a few years ago and it's still one of my absolute favorite books and i just really want to try some of her other work the only reason why I haven't read this one yet is because I can never seem to find it in the shops in the UK and for some reason her books seem to be more expensive on Amazon and Book Depository than a lot of other books are. They don't really seem to have any discount on them so I just haven't got- We love a cheap queen. <laughs> Always thinking about that discount. ...around to buy it yet and I can't find it in any libraries but when I do find it I would definitely read it because it sounds really good and I just loved Laurie House Anderson's writing. Again I wouldn't like class Laurie House Anderson as like one of my favourite authors now but maybe that's because it's been so long since I did read her work because even here it had been like maybe two or three years since I read one of her books. This is The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. And wow this is such a throwback this was such a popular book in like 2013 2014 like before I even started making booktube videos I feel like when I was first watching booktube this was what everyone was talking about it's like historical fiction i don't really care about reading it anymore but i had such massive fomo for not having read this at the time and i'm not sure why i haven't read this one yet either it's set in world war ii so i definitely think it will be something that i enjoy because i am really interested in reading books set in that time period and i try to make a conscious effort to buy and read a lot of books that i hear about that are set in that time period but for some reason i just haven't got around to picking this one up yet i don't know if it's because it looks so big and intimidating but i definitely 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 want to read it eventually because i'm sure i will love it See, that's so funny because now I'm just like not bothered. Like I wouldn't buy it if I saw it unless it was maybe like a pound. <laughs> uh, but I think I can see on the cover, it says a love story. So I just 
think if it's like a romance then it wouldn't be something that i would massively enjoy anyway i think i was very much caught up in the hype on this one at number 17 is the 13th tale by dan setterfield oh do i still have this is this on the shelf with all the other books that i haven't read i can't see it but it could be in my flat equally i might have got rid of it because i hadn't read it for so long but i remember watching a tv show of this and enjoying it and there's some like weird thing with twins in it i want to say so it's not a massive priority but it's not one that i would ever rule out reading i again watched the tv adaptation of this when it was on a few years ago and i absolutely loved it so i bought the book and never got around to reading it i can't really Classic. remember what it's about now though so i think that will be good going into the book not really remembering or knowing what it's about because then it will be completely fresh and new to me at number 18 is pride and prejudice by jane austen no <laughs> here's my thing with jane austen not even with jane austen with pride and prejudice I just can't get into it and I don't know why I think I'm gonna have to try the audiobook so the other Austins I've read I've read Emma for uni and I really enjoyed that one it was one of my favorite books that I read for uni I think having watched Clueless beforehand helped massively though and the other one that I've read is Sense and Sensibility I read that last year I listened to most of it on audio though and I think if I'd have just been reading it physically I would have given up because I think I read the first few chapters physically and then couldn't get into it so I switched to the audio because that was on script and then I was able to like enjoy it. I didn't love it. It was a three star, I think. But I do know that people say that her others are better. I think that's one of like the least popular ones. Pride and Prejudice, I've tried to read twice. I tried to read it when I was 17. Like when I was, um, I remember reading it on trains when I was going to university open days and stuff because I was applying to do English and hadn't really read a great deal of books that you probably should have read if you're applying to do English at uni and i read like 100 pages of it and then the second time i tried to read it was the start of 2020 i tried to read it straight after reading little women and i was reading it for months and months and months and i would say i'm probably about halfway through it but i never got to the end of it and i just struggled with it so much i feel like i don't know if my brain just can't engage but i just didn't really know what was going on half the time i was literally reading like spark notes to try and figure it out because i've never seen like any adaptation of it either which i know like yeah i've been living under a rock but i haven't so maybe i should watch that and then try and read it again i don't know i do really want to finish it at this point just to say that i have finished it if you've read pride and prejudice or just austin in general do let me know what your thoughts are and how to like get into her work because I do enjoy like the humour behind it when I'm into it but I just, I don't know, I just have such a difficult time. I read my first ever Jane Austen book which was Emma earlier this year and I really enjoyed it and I feel that Pride and Prejudice is just one of those ones that I have to read eventually so it deserved its place on this list. Also I have this really nice edition of it so it would be rude not to read this one at some point. Yeah, as I've already said, I'm not going to read from that edition because it will just wear the spine down and I want it to look pretty and, and vain. Number 19 is the Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. I haven't read this either. I think this was in my like haul that I reacted to. I really enjoyed The Muse. I read that one in like 2019, I want to say. But I haven't read any other Jesse Burton and this is still one that I want to get to, I think it's sort of been bumped up a bit higher on my priority list after having enjoyed The Muse. Like most of these books, I've been meaning to read it forever since it came out basically and I've never got round to oh. it and I just really, really want to. I don't know what else I can say to be honest. And finally at number 20 is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. No, I haven't read this one either. This is quite funny actually because I feel like a lot of people in our reading sprints have been reading this and Rhiannon and I were talking about it literally yesterday when we were on our most recent sprints and saying how we said that we were going to do a buddy read at some point but it's one of those things that we're just going to keep saying that we're going to buddy read forever and are we ever going to get around to it who knows i think maybe like a september october sort of time might be a good time for this again it's just one of those that you're like oh yeah i'll get to that eventually which i still have the price sticker on if you ignore that this is another one that i've owned for absolutely ages but haven't picked up yet i think the reason i haven't read a lot of these is because they're more adult books and i always seem to lean towards why i but i'm going to try and check that's interesting that i said that i genuinely didn't remember that i said that but i guess it kind of goes with what i was saying about how i did used to read a lot of YA then and now i don't and i do read more literary fiction and stuff maybe 
a lot of these books would be more suited to my tastes now and I just had to have those few years where I was like figuring out what I wanted to read in between change that because a lot of people say that they absolutely love this book and it's like one of their favorites so I just need to pick it up and also this one's got black pages which I think is really cool so those were 20 books that I'm going to read in my 20s hopefully I'll get around to them don't know if I'll still have this YouTube channel in 10 years to update you all but hopefully you'll see these in wrap-ups at some point in the future okay so those are 20 books that I wanted to read in my 20s and how I feel about them now at 25 almost how many did I actually read I'll put it on screen but I think I read four which is not great really is it because I should be on 10 but again I didn't count how many I still want to read but there were definitely some on there that I'm like not bothered about and I would say that out of the rest of them the ones that I would like to prioritize that aren't really that many there were a lot that I would still say are like on my TBR so things like The Hobbit for example but if I don't read that in the next five years then pfft, you know whatever i mean ultimately it doesn't really matter if i read any of them in the next five years there's no like time limit but i guess in terms of like thinking about reprioritizing some of these the ones that i would really like to get around to are the miniaturist the lovely bones the tenant of wildfell hall so yeah i guess it was kind of cool to like reevaluate, and maybe if i'm still here in five years time or on a different channel with my third reincarnation on youtube i can react to the video at 30 um after 10 years and see if i've managed any more of them than i have now other than that though that is it for today's video i would love to know in the comments if there's any books that you have had on your tbr for like 10 years and have just been putting off forever or you can just leave me an emoji to let me know that you've watched the video. I hope you're all keeping safe and staying well and I will see you again next time. Bye!